Maybe some consolidation still in store for Bitcoin on the daily chart. Maybe a little bit of a fake out. There is an area on this BTC chart to watch for bullish confirmation, but it's a very cautious area to watch for in the short term. Cardano zoomed out. I spotted something yesterday. It's kind of an exciting macro view to ADA. I want to go over that. And obviously, we'll zoom in on the ADA charts as well. This is ADA on the daily. What to anticipate? Maybe a fake out and some volatility in play on Cardano charts. Hit the subscribe, hit the like. Let's jump into the video. I figured a nice little zoomed out and zoomed in technical analysis for Bitcoin and Cardano on this Saturday would be just a good, a good laid back video to do. Before I dive into Bitcoin, here's kind of the headline of the weekend. Outflows from spot Bitcoin ETFs overpowered new capital. On each day this past week, record low inflows for BlackRock. And then Grayscale saw record-breaking single-day outflows on Monday, March 18th. So Wall Street's spot Bitcoin ETF set a new record, and it wasn't the bullish records that we've been seeing in weeks past. Crypto traders may be less than enthusiastic. Five straight days of net outflows. That's, that's kind of this weekend's Bitcoin news. And that, that, that doesn't look extremely bullish, but I want to I set the record straight on something here. At the current rate of redemptions, GBTC runs out of Bitcoin to sell in 96 days. So it's, it's coming very quickly, the end of the grayscale outflows, right? And while that's happening, and, and this plays into, you know, we can have bearish weeks, we can have bearish headlines on a on a weekend like we're having right now but what the story that's playing out in the longer term and we're going to start zooming out on the bitcoin charts and where we are in the cycle we're at the beginning of a bull market here's what's really happening this is what really has happened blackrock changed its mind on bitcoin and decided to launch an etf because clients were consistent in enduring and enduring in expressing their interest in bitcoin through bull and bear markets so this pressure from Grayscale is going to end. And we're going to be right back into this environment where there is this institutional demand coming and flowing into Bitcoin. It's not even Bitcoin having. We're entering this part of the cycle. Here's last cycle. Post Bitcoin having. Here's the cycle before that all the way back here. Post Bitcoin having. We're entering this area of the cycle. Once again, Grayscale will be out of the game shortly. And we will have all this institutional demand and it will be the first bull market where we have it. I, wanted to, I just wanted to throw that out there as we, as we dive into the charts. I think that macro narrative view is important as we're getting shorter term, you know, weekend news that looks bearish for Bitcoin. People obviously are talking about the consolidation that's happening with Bitcoin and this could really play into, uh, you know, the next couple of weeks, even a month or so of consolidation going into the halving. And that is possible. But I just wanted to paint that story. The other thing is, if you look at the weekly chart, this, this red consolidation that's happening on the weekly, just look at it. Last cycle, when we broke the Fibonacci, the lower high Fibonacci range, the bull market doors, just there was a couple of red candles there, a lot of volatility, a lot of consolidation above the Fibonacci bull market doors as Bitcoin just kind of hovering around all-time high. Same exact type of thing happened at this moment last time, hovering at all-time high. So much just rhythm on this Bitcoin chart. I wanted to point that out. Now, going into the daily chart, here's where, here's where we have a lot going on. There's a lot to track. And, and mainly, everybody, this isn't me trying to predict anything. None of my videos are. This is for anticipation purposes to really get a sense of where could, where could a bullish confirmation signal be? And, and if not, where, where would support be if there's a continued downtrend? So here's what I wanted to point out. This is the biggest thing that I kind of opened up the chart today and I just saw. We've broken below the 20-day moving average. I think the other day I discussed in a video the potential for just grappling with this area, right? As Bitcoin consolidates, as, Bit as Bitcoin tries to form structure, we fell through the area. We briefly were trying to see support there, fell through the area, came back up, failed in this daily candle from the 20th a few days ago. And now you can see we're still below it. I think there's a strong case, there always is, when Bitcoin's doing something like that, we're below the 20-day moving average. After seeing higher highs and higher, lo higher lows above that area, by the way, there's the case where we'll, we'll pull into it and we'll test it again. And that's like the $67,700 area right now for Bitcoin. 
that's not far away for Bitcoin to make a move there. The question is what happens at that area, whether it happens in today's daily candle, there's still six hours left of that or tomorrow's daily candle. Who knows when this could happen, but what happens at the 20 day? Does Bitcoin break back above? There could be a fake out, right? Oftentimes, because many people are zoomed in on the charts, we could see right now, even today, Bitcoin's 65,000 to 66,000. Bitcoin could start making a move towards 67. People start getting bullish, like, man, here we go again. We're making that move. But if we zoom out, just even right here on the daily, it's kind of like there's there's really no bullish confirmation until Bitcoin closes daily candle above the 20 day moving average area around 67,700. And not only that, gets get some separation from that area, right? Because again, I'm anticipating and just watching how Bitcoin grapples with that entire area now that Bitcoin has fallen below it. So if Bitcoin can break back above, this this entire reversal zone up here for uh, for Bitcoin, and this is a Lux Algo indicator, this entire reversal zone, I think right now, kind of acting as a higher high magnet, right? So if Bitcoin actually does make a power move, I'd be looking for Bitcoin to, to put in a new local high. Well, I guess it would be an, a new all-time high, right? Uh, and, and put in a higher high. And, and in that moment, I'd be really watching what is the RSI doing? What is it signaling in terms of momentum and, str momentum and strength of Bitcoin? If Bitcoin doesn't do that, though, and we do see continued consolidation below the 20-day, there's maybe Bitcoin makes a move and there's resistance there and we're going lower, I continue just to look at the swing high to wherever the new swing low will be the 50-day moving average is down here around $58,000. Confluent, as we mentioned, I think in yesterday's video, confluent with the upper end of the upper line of the bull market doors, the Fibonacci, uh, which is a macro indicator, huge multi-cycle indicator right there around $57,000. And then also this rising wedge upper trend line. So a throwback to that entire area into the mid 50s, that's in like another $10,000 fall for Bitcoin from this moment. That's very much in play. Could, could, it could take a little bit of time. Maybe we would test a 20. Maybe we pop back above briefly, but fail to hold support, no separation, and we trickle down again. Maybe it's like the first week of April before we, we make a way, our way into that area. Not sure what the consolidation will look like. I'm just looking for, can we get separation above the 20 if there's a bullish move? And if not, what does the move to kind of this area down here look like? And what kind of structure do we start forming from the swing high here? And then to this move to the downside, what kind of balance is there what, and what kind of structure? Again, always looking for symmetrical triangles, ascending triangles, descending triangles, whatever. But that's what I'm watching on this daily chart as we do go into the Bitcoin halving. So that 20-day that moving average, I think for me, from a technical analysis perspective for this weekend is what I'm watching. Can Bitcoin make a move there? And then what happens at that area? That's what I'll be watching. I just want to mention this because I mentioned yesterday's video is this inverse head and shoulders, which I'm sure there are people talking about this. Kind of a, an area just to watch for fun on the very short term. This is a four-hour chart, but you can see the, the neckline here. It's a downward sloping neckline right around $66,500. So another $1,000 move for Bitcoin to get there. What happens there? Can Bitcoin make a breakthrough? This could be the case for the higher high. It could be that pattern, this inverse head and shoulders over here on Bitcoin. Target to the upside, $76,000, $77,000. So going over to ADA, here's the ADA chart. Many of you know I zoom out on ADA a lot. This is what the weekly looks like. We've been tracking just so many different things. I'm not going to get into all of the different things that we've tracked so far. You all know the similar structure at this point last cycle. We're right, kind of right around here, consolidating. Same exact thing happening right now. We're here consolidating. We have a pattern in here, rising wedge we've been talking about. Uh, really bullish target above a dollar if, if we're able to break to the upside. But I was, I was, and I kind of recorded a quick video about this yesterday. I even tweeted kind of about this yesterday on the very just zoomed out, clean looking weekly chart. There's really no indicators. There's no moving averages. I said, I don't know what Cardano will do, but imagine if the next move is exactly what it did last cycle at this time. And then I just posted this because when I zoomed out on the very clean looking weekly, and let me, let me just actually get rid of some of these moving averages to really clean it up. I really just, I looked at it and I was like, you know what? This is crazy. We've really been talking about the similarities of this move last cycle into right here where Bitcoin's breaking the bull market doors, breaking all time high. Here's where Cardano was. So similar right now, right? And you can see a little bit less volatility, less stronger of a move, but we're in the same type of thing. But what I noticed was just look at actually the formation because we've been tracking the, the, the formation of this descending triangle that... 
Cardano kind of bottomed out in this bear market, very similar to last cycle. But going back to this weekly, and this is kind of just, this is really just for fun. And it's also truly to just re-echo what I'm saying here in this, in this post. It looks like just kind of this inverse head and shoulders, right? Left shoulder, head, small right shoulder, breaks the neckline, breakout. Left shoulder, head, small right shoulder, we're, we're like tested the neckline. It's like, will that repeat? And that is a story that, I'm, that is just, I'm watching right now. And it's, just, it's incredibly exciting from a technical analysis perspective. And again, similar with Bitcoin, there's so much rhythm on the Cardano zoomed out charts. And I don't know what will happen next. I really don't. But I do know as we start zooming into the charts, this is where things get really exciting. So on the daily, it's kind of very similar to, to Bitcoin. For ADA, uh, and we even have a recent example back here, what could potentially happen right now. For ADA, we're looking at the, the support just above this lower trend line of the rising wedge. We got this bounce of support and actually didn't touch the lower trend line, but we're just above it. And you can see right now on the 50-day the moving average, ADA kind of just grappling with the 50-day. Here's the 20-day up here. And this is kind of what I wanted to make a point of. If you notice, we kind of had the swing high on the wedge, and then we just fell. And then what happened? We broke the 20-day moving average in green right there, and ADA pulled right into the 20-day moving average before going lower. Now... We've fallen below the 20-day moving average in green once again. And it's just like Bitcoin. We could have this move to the upside. ADA could make a move to 70 cent range at the 20-day moving average right now and fail there. So we could have a move and then ADA just starts coming back down and just puts in a new low, right? Right around 60 cents. Maybe even we get a fake breakout. Or not, I shouldn't say a fake breakout, an actual real fake or a real breakout which could lead to a fake breakout out of the rising wedge. And this could be kind of a, a little bit different of structure this cycle around. So far, the move down is very similar to this time of last cycle. The move that would be different and a little bit hints of bearish would be if, if Cardano breaks this lower trend line uh, and starts making a move to the downside below this basic rising wedge, rising channel that we have for ADA. But I do want to just make a point. Lower trend line for ADA right now, and right, it sits below ADA around 56 cents. That's an area of support to watch. Don't know if it will hold. It's what I'm tracking. And then the 20-day moving average for ADA around 70 cents. What happens if ADA makes a move there? It could be a similar kind of story like we got back here at the 20 and then we went lower. If we take our bars pattern, we can even look at what that move looks like. So this swing low is very similar to the swing low that we're getting now. So swing low to that swing high 20-day moving average resistance. We can just pull it over. And we can just take the bars pattern and say, you know what? What if we get something like that? We do get a move to the upside and then it's a fake out. And then ADA comes back down, puts in a new low, and it is outside of the, of the rising wedge, lower trend line. Could we hope for kind of a little bit of a fake out where it's pulling back into the, to the range and then we're getting a move to the upside? Maybe we don't even get a break for ADA to the upside, a power move until after Bitcoin having. You can see the volatility and the unknown that could really be in play right now, not only for the Bitcoin charts we just looked at, but for something like ADA. And there can be a lot of fear and unknown and volatility along the way, but this is just one scenario to watch for. But I think ultimately, on the short term, what I'm watching for for ADA is the lower trend line of the rising wedge, no, no guarantee it'll hold, and then the 20-day moving average. If ADA gets any type of bullish move, what happens there? Like Bitcoin, can it break above? And can it start getting separation above? Uh, and I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure it's time for that momentum move for ADA on these charts, but it could be. We'll see as we watch the RSI tell the story as well. You can see it's kind of trying to bottom at, at pre previous lows that we see on the momentum oscillator. Uh, and we'll see if that holds or if we need to kind of test that lower once again for ADA to consolidate. So this is what I'm watching on Bitcoin and ADA this weekend. Not too much going on, but figured I'd do a quick little update for y'all. I hope you're having a good weekend. Hit the subscribe, hit the like. I'll see you in the next video. God bless.